Hello everybody, this is Tech Cut. In this video, what I'm going to be doing is giving you a rundown of what I believe to be the 10 best Linux applications that you could go ahead, download and install today. All of these applications are free and open source. And most of these, I believe actually, all of these except for one application is cross platform. So whether if you are on Windows or Mac OS, you're going to be able to get a vast majority of these applications. Also, make sure you stay tuned to the end of this video because I'll have a couple honorable mentions to go ahead and put forward. So with that, let's get into the list. And coming in at number one, we have Obsidian. Ever since I made that video on Mark Text, this one has been heavily recommended to me. Obsidian is a Markdown editor that goes well beyond the basic functionalities of Markdown. Obsidian claims to be a second brain. After building a vault of your notes, articles, whatever it may be, you can go ahead and link a lot of these articles together using a simple function, and then Obsidian will automatically organize them in a pleasantly appealing graph that after using this application for a while and having a lot of notes linked together, will actually kind of mimic the look of like a brain neural network, and that's where they get that second brain idea. Now, this may be the most unique feature of this application, but in addition to this, you get an awesome command palette, quick switch tools, and an advanced markdown importing feature. Looking at some of the settings, we can see that there is a huge amount of options, including hotkeys, appearance, and general preferences, all the way to community-driven plugins and much more. Right now, I'm actually working on a long-term project that involves me switching over to Obsidian from all the other text editors that I use, so make sure you are subscribed so you can see that video when it comes out. Now, before we go ahead and move on to the next application, I have to thank the sponsor of today's video, Into the AM. Now, this right here is their website, and just by browsing around, we can see the huge selection of t-shirts they have to choose from. Right now, I'm wearing one of their basic tees, and I actually bought these ones myself in the bundle package to go ahead and save some money. I'm a fairly big dude, and these are incredibly comfortable. In addition to their basic tees, they have a lot of cool designs and graphics. This is actually my favorite shirt from them that I own. But one of these next go-arounds, I'm probably going to end up picking up one of the astronaut ones. And like I said, not only does it look nice, but all these shirts feel absolutely wonderful. They're comfortable. The actual designs don't feel like they're going to fade really quick. I would definitely recommend them. So if you're interested in checking them out, make sure you use the link down below to get 10% off your order. And now with that, let's continue on to our next application. And that next application we're gonna be taking a look at is OBS Studio. When it comes just to being a overall fantastic free and open source piece of software with both overall support and community love, OBS Studio probably takes the crown. The open broadcast software in its simplest functionality provides you a phenomenal screen recording experience. You're provided with a clean interface with an overwhelming feature set such as easy input switching, advanced audio mixers and filters, and an endless possibilities to what you can do and the content that you can produce. Now, I've been using OBS Studio for about two years, and before that, I used Camtasia Studio over on Windows. And after getting used to OBS Studio, even comparing this software to something that's premium, such as Camtasia Studio, really just isn't fair to the premium software. Coming at number three is going to be R Studio. Now, this is a recent discovery of mine, as it is required for me to learn for my geostatistics course. But this thing is awesome. In the simplest of terms, this can do everything that a scientific calculator can do and way more. RStudio is a graphic utility that helps you better interact with the R programming language. R is a language and environment for statistical computing. In addition to basic calculation functions, you can set data sets to a variable to easily perform various statistical functions and create graphs. And this application goes even well beyond that. It's actually really easy to see what it can do by going to the help tab in the bottom right. Now, overall, as a programming language, R is fantastic. The syntax is really easy to understand and it's just really easy to go ahead and pick up if you spend some time trying to learn it. With that, we're going to the fourth application on this list and that is MPV. Personally, I do not understand why Linux distributions are still shipping with like something like VLC when MPV is readily available. This application has built-in codec support for a vast majority of the media that you will encounter. 
The UI is simple and intuitive. MPV doesn't come with a ton of preloaded features that you'll probably never use. And there is a huge amount of user created scripts that you could go ahead and download and use to provide those additional functions that you may need. Coming in on the fifth spot of this list, we have OpenRGB. Now, OpenRGB solved one of the problems that Linux computers struggled with for a very long time, and that is the customizable RF. <laughs> And that is the customizable RGB lighting within your system. Gone are the days of the stock rainbow color fade on your Wraith Prism cooler that came with your AMD CPU. OpenRGB supports a whole host of manufacturers such as Asus, ASRock, Corsair, G-Skill, Gigabyte, and much more. With a lot of free and open source software, not everything is perfect. Unfortunately, it's not currently working with my Asus gaming laptop. However, on my Linux desktop, it works great. And this application is available for Windows as well. If you don't want like your manufacturer bloat software on your computer, but you still want that functionality available to you. Next up at number six, we have Goverlay. This is an absolute must if you are a Linux gamer. This will allow you to monitor frame rates and other critical information about your system during your gameplay. Additionally, there are some benchmarking functionalities that you can set up to record information and have that information display in some really stunning graphs. Overall, this application is very easy to set up and the footage that you are seeing now is from Linux for everybody. And there will be a link to the video down below so you can check that out for more details. So with that, next up we have Blender and Blender is one of those applications that is literally the definition of perfection of open source software. In short, Blender is a full featured 3D creation suite that includes all the steps of 3D production from modeling, rigging, animation, and much more. Blender even includes an integrated video editor with keyframes, filters, audio manipulation, and when it comes to the feature set of Blender, this is barely scraping the surface. What you're seeing on the screen now is just one of the latest example projects created in Blender. Next up, this application you might not have expected on this list due to how industry specific it is, but like OBS Studio, this is one of those applications that amazes me that it is free and open source software, and that application is QGIS. Now this is an advanced geoprocessing and analysis tool. Basically, if you've ever looked at a map with any type of data being portrayed on it, that map was probably rendered in a GIS application, and that GIS application was probably the uh, incredibly proprietary ArcGIS Pro or the free and open source QGIS. Now I've used this application a few times during school and every single time I've used it, it has been remarkable. Um, overall, when it comes to designing maps, the symbology on this I think is better than ArcGIS Pro and that's saying a lot. Now this right here is a project I worked on that involves mapping ancient floods in my state of Washington. With QGIS, you can get raster and some point data, do things such as overlaying it with a state polygon, uh, work on some symbology, and before you know it, you'll have a beautiful looking map. Now for the ninth placement in this list, we have FreeCAD. Personally, admittedly, I have zero experience in this application, but based on talking to you guys and some of your suggestions or recommendations, this is a fantastic application. FreeCAD is a popular 3D modeling software that allows you to design real life objects. This free and open source software is designed to fit the product design solution for a wide variety of industries. Whether if you're a professional engineer, architect, or hobbyist looking to design and print your own 3D models. Now down below, I'm gonna to link to some additional resources that I do recommend you check out uh, to learn more about it and see what it really can do. And with that, we're gonna talk about the very last application on this list of 10. Probably should have mentioned in the beginning of this video, this isn't in order from best to worst. This is just the 10 best, in my opinion. And the 10th on this list is going to be Inkscape. This is a powerful vector graphics editing application. Vector graphics differ from standard photo editing because instead of working on a vector plane on a pixel by pixel basis, you work with images that use mathematical equations that result in them being easy to manipulate and when you enlarge vector graphics, you don't lose any quality. Inkscape works very similar to Adobe Illustrator, and it has all the basic tools you'd expect to create these graphics, including shape tools, nodes, color palettes, and gradients, and a whole host of various path operations and much more. 
So that is the top 10, in my opinion. If you have any disagreements, please let me know down below. Or if you think that there's another application on this list that should have been included, please let me know as well. Um, I did not include applications that I listed in the 2020 or 2021 videos. I recommend you check those out. Those features, things such as GIMP, Caden Live, uh, a, a whole lot of things. There's 20 there, 10 here, so we have 30 now. Now with that, of course, we are going to have some honorable mentions. In the beginning of this video, I mentioned MarkText. MarkText is a fantastic markdown editing application that I've been using for some time before I started trying out Obsidian. If you're not looking for the crazy suite of features that Obsidian has and plugins and all that, MarkText is awesome. And personally, when it comes to actually writing things out, the general interface of MarkText, I believe, is a little bit better than Obsidian. The live edits as you're moving around, I think it is a phenomenal application. And then for the next honorable mention, I'm probably going to have to mention Easy SSH. I've been using this quite a bit to go ahead and interact with various servers. I have three local servers and I have three up on the cloud, so six different things to go ahead and manage, update, take care of. And Easy SSH has been awesome because I've been able to save profiles really easy. The reason why this isn't included on the main list of applications is because there's no uh, SSH key option, so that's not available. A lot of the applications that I mentioned in this video, I have videos for, or I'm gonna be linking to other videos down below, so make sure you check those out, as well as the GitHub pages, and if you really like any of these free and open source applications, maybe consider contributing to the actual project. With that, I do hope that you enjoyed this video. Big thank you to Into the AM for sponsoring it. Fantastic shirts, would recommend, use that link. And thank you to our YouTube members and Patreon supporters. Your support is truly humbling, humbling, humbling. With all that, have a beautiful day and goodbye.